And this is called Snow Geese. And Stuart helped me with this. Remember this? A little bit different, but anyway. And this is going to be made into a song, I'm told. I don't know how they're going to do it. Also, you need to know that um, there's, a song, uh, it's a, there's a song mentioned in here called Delia, which is part of the Merry Widow, which the Merry Widow sings. And Delia was a nymph that uh, fell in love with a mortal, and the, the, um, the penalty for that is that she has to return. She can no longer stay on Earth. She has to leave. Snow geese. Sometimes there were signs. After the March maelstrom, I snowshoed up our mountain in the morning sun and tracked into another storm. At first, I thought the yappings were coyotes chasing me, but being overhead all white and black tip, with black-tipped wings, calling me then disappearing into the oncoming blow was a flight of snow geese. By the time I got down, the cottoned forest was prismed in the thawing light. Drops glistened and draped every tree like a diamond necklace adorning my wife, singing the Merry Widow. For a moment, Villa was in the mist between the tall pines. The wood nymph's presence was fresh and chilly, a rush of rivulets. Winter loosened its grip like the last clutch of my wife's hand before she slipped into unconsciousness. Next one's also about a hawk. It's called uh, Hawk Rise, and this is a little bit about the country where I live. There, it's, it's uh, in the Berkshires. Hawk rise. I bike into a Sunday bathed in bright light flooding the Housatonic. The slate bottom clouds bearing autumn drift from the west into the clear sky cathedral spread over the Taconic Range. At Shady Maple Farm, I greet my neighbor astride his tractor, harvesting his dry tasseled cornfield. Crossing the river's bridge, I watch his cattle graze and grace the pasture along its banks as is regular, as irregular as their black and white hides. Like the cloud shadow today, I wander free over this valley floor. I run the broad meadow, yellowed in goldenrod, and climb to the forest, foothill forest, tinged early red. I cross a field dotted orange with pumpkins and linger at Flax and haystacks left like giant bread loaves in an emerald bed. My thoughts reach for the mountain tops, their new energy like wind traced in the rustling trees, something released, silent, then soaring, like that harbinger hawk rising, spirit's messenger over this green, green field. Okay. So um, this one's from uh, from my trip. It's in Bali, um, and uh, if you've ever been to Bali, it's a place where people really live their religion every day. Uh, and it's called the Year of the Rooster, and I think the Year of the Rooster sort of begins today or this weekend or something. So instead of the Super Bowl, the people in Asia are celebrating the Year of the Rooster. <laughs> Year of the Rooster. In Bali, a chorus of a thousand roosters conspire to raise the sun and divide, divine the morning of the world. A golden hue rewards the palm tangle edging the rice terraces stacked and soggy from an ancient irrigation system and green with the goodness that sustains the Orient. I go to the Ubud marketplace, alive with women selling sarongs, saffron, scarves, incense, and spices that exotically scent the trading in close quarters to buy a small palm leaf tray called a kanang. 
of offering flowers. I make a path through the hawkers, the batik, carved wooden mask, and tchotchkes, who sense I have fresh funds, to a forest at the end of town, and walk down many stairs to the sound of water spewing through a deep crevice in the earth. I cross a bridge over the stream whose rails are carved or a carved stone serpent arching through a portal cut square through an arrow root web of a massive banyan tree spanning the sacred stream. There I bathe with the other worshipers in a clear pool watered from volcanic rock and revive from the humidity and the descent to wash away my travel husk and demons with clear water and prayer. I dry and wrap in the requisite sarong and sash around me to cross the temple threshold open arced into the sky and enter barefoot the inner temple yard with many altars wrapped in bright cloths. The priest, white turbaned and robed, is chanting and ringing a small bell between incantations. I sit cross-legged to address the presence in the prescribed manner, cleansing my hands in the smoking ember of my incense stick and then clasping a flower of the right color from my canine before my forehead and then tossing it away. White first for the great one, then mauve and amber for the lesser and local gods, careful not to offend anyone under the guise of fierce stone temple guardians and indifferent but teeth-bearing monkeys playing among themselves over the statues in the inner sanctum. I soon come to the silence and find a presence all around me in each empty stone seat high on the pagoda platforms that invite the mystery no, become the mystery those roosters scare up each morning. Thank you.